Hey everyone, FSU Bones here from the Inglorious Bastards gaming community. And before I get into this video today, I want to thank everyone who commented on my last video, the open letter to Capcan glitchers. Uh, was obviously a little bit controversial, and that's okay, but I appreciate all the feedback that I received, and hopefully it will make my content better in the future. So in this video, I want to kind of give a beginner's guide to roaming in Rainbow Six Siege. Roaming is one of the most effective ways to play defense, I feel, in this game. And I think that every team needs to have at least one to two people roaming around in order to be really effective. If you all get cluster jammed up into one room, it's really going to be a bad thing. So I wanted to go over some things today that I think can help you out if you're new to roaming or you're just not very good at it. So the first thing I want to talk about is what operators you should pick when you are roaming. And for me, I think you don't want to pick anyone with a level 3 armor. If you have level 3 armor, you have level 1 speed, and sometimes that's just going to get you in trouble when you are roaming. It's important to remember that when you're roaming, you are most likely going to be outnumbered at times. You're going to face two to three guys or you might face a guy with a shield and sometimes you need to get out of there and run away in order to fight a little bit later on in the round and that's okay so having someone oh, with three speed or two speed is definitely a must because you can get out of sticky situations a lot faster one of my favorite people to roam with now is Frost. I think she is amazing, not just because her bear traps are cool, but I think both her weapons are pretty effective and she's got a nice balance between armor and speed. Also, when picking an operator, I think it's important to use someone who has a nitrous cell. This can become very, very handy if you run up against a shield guy. You don't have to wait for a buddy to come and flank you. You can just take him head on and shoot him. Or it's effective when you have a group of two to three guys and you sneak up on them and rather than shooting them, you can just quickly throw down a nitrous cell and take out uh, hopefully the whole group, but if not, you can take out most of them. So that's pretty important. Now that you got your operator picked, it's important to consider where you want to start when you first spawn in or actually I should say when the preparation phase ends, I recommend that you start either two floors above the objective or down in the basement if it's not there. Most teammates or most opponents I come across actually come in on the floor that the objective is at or they come in on the floor above where the objective's at. So that's a pretty good starting point if you want to be is two floors above or down in the basement. Now, as soon as the preparation phase counter hits zero, you really want to have someone who's sitting with the objective on cameras trying to give you some intel on where the enemies are coming from. Even a shot out camera can give you valuable intelligence. If you know they shot out the construction site and you have good map knowledge, you can figure out where they're coming from. And this way you can adjust your starting point accordingly. Remember, you don't necessarily want to be in the room that they're going to come in on, especially if you're playing uh, a more passive way of roaming. So what is passive roaming? Passive roaming is where you kind of sit back and let the enemy get past you, and you can kind of sneak up from behind and just wipe them all out as well, while they're either stacking up on a door or while your uh, teammates engage them from the front. This is a very effective tactic, and I encourage you to use it. It requires a lot of patience, and you've got to figure out the timing of the enemies, but if you do it well, it can get you some really quick kills. Aggressive roaming is a little bit more different. Instead of letting the team pass you by, you really want to meet them head on as quickly as possible once they spawn in. So this might mean, okay, I use my intelligence. I know they're on the third floor. I'm going to try to get there hard and fast and take them out as quickly as I can. This is really effective if you're carrying a shotgun. Run in there as soon as they bust open a window and pop them as soon as they leap through. Aggressive roaming can also be done with SMGs, especially if you're going to pop out windows and try to shoot enemies as they get into the building. This can be very effective, although I know it's controversial, but I found it to be a really useful tool. You don't even necessarily have to get kills in order for it to be effective. I played the game the other day where I was able to keep the enemy team out of the building until there was about a minute left in the round. That really causes them to panic and have to rush their attack, and it really helps your team. So even if you can't kill them, go ahead and try to get aggressive. You might just help your team win. 
Finally, having a buddy to roam with you can also be effective. You might have noticed in these last two clips, me and Woes were kind of roaming together, and we used some really good coordination to kind of uh, hit the enemy from both sides. So if you can have a buddy and you can communicate well, I would consider you using a buddy as well. Anyway, guys, I hope this helps you out. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.